first of all, thank you, Matt. It's it's just such an honor always to hear you speak and to be um, with you and hear about all the wonderful things you've done and are doing. It's it's you know you are one of my heroes and inspiration. Uh, he Matt gave us some advice in Richmond from the very beginning, and and it really has helped us every step of the way. So let me start out by just giving you a little introduction of myself. Um, my name is Gail McLaughlin, and I'm the two-term mayor of Richmond, California. I served 13 years, almost 13 years, um, in office in Richmond as a corporate-free elected official. That means no corporate money in any of my elections, nor when I was in office. And I'm also, and this is very, very important, a co-founder of the Richmond Progressive Alliance. And finally, I'm a candidate for Lieutenant Governor of California. Now, <laughs> now, now um, let me just say that um, over those 13 years in office, I learned a lot. And one thing that I can say, and I... I can say that I did this, but not alone. I did this along with the Richmond Progressive Alliance. We stood on the front lines of politics, on the front lines where idealism meets policy. And what we did was we made it clear that vision and values are not a pipe dream. You know, it's often seen as, you know, you might have these wonderful progressive values and a great vision. However, they tell us it's all a pipe dream, but we know that it is feasible. All of us in this room know it's not only feasible to put our values and vision into action, but it's urgent that we do so. So I want to, I want to um, say that First of all, San Francisco deserves a lot of credit for all the wonderful work you have done. And I want to just give a, a, a special kudos to all of you for this recent thing about getting City College of San Francisco tuition free. Congratulations to all of you. You are a leader, truly a leader in the country. So um, we're going to make, make your leadership uh, happen throughout California. Now. Um, these are really difficult times, but we can, none of us can stand on the sidelines. I mean, the, the Trump administration has thrown us into this catastrophic freefall um, between the, the problems that he's created in the State Department and with the EPA and for, the, uh, for LGBTQ rights and women's health care. I mean, he has really done a lot of damage, but there is no way that we can sit around and wait for this storm to pass. It is not going to pass. We are the ones that have to get in the middle of it and turn things around, and we will, and we are. So um, let me just go on to say that California is a special state, as we all know. We have a state that has been known for its progressive values, for its radical vision of a, of a future. We've, we've stood at the forefront of things like gay marriage and environmental rights and um, now legalization of marijuana and uh, immigrant rights, civil rights. All these things are things that California has led the way on. So, um, we need to you know, want, understand that we can continue to lead the way. In fact, we need to. I mean, we have all kinds of challenges. We know that as well. Um, but we, we're not afraid to dream big. And we're not afraid to make that dream a dream of a radical future. So um, let's keep that dream going and know that, um, that that dream is not something just in the abstract. I know that because I had the honor of playing a leadership role in a California city, in Richmond, California, where we accomplished a major transformation. And we did that because we weren't afraid to dream big and that we knew it was up to us to make the change. So we decided that we were going to come together and form an organization, and we called our organization the Richmond Progressive Alliance. We had had enough. You know, before the 
the Richmond Progressive Alliance, which has come to be known as the RPA. Before the RPA, Richmond, as some of you may know, was simply known as a city with high crime, with a lot of pollution. You know, we have this big uh, Chevron oil refinery in the city um, and a lot of poverty. You know, it wasn't known for much else and it it did not have a good reputation. But the reason for that is because the whole city council were were in Chevron's hands. Um, Chevron had either purchased the city council members or had them so intimidated they they weren't able to do anything on their own in terms of their own independent thinking. So um, the RPA said, "This this is not acceptable. You know, we have to make change. We have to become the leaders that we're waiting for. And so... We formed the RPA as an inclusive, diverse, year-round, progressive, corporate-free organization with the purpose of building local political power. And we did that, uh, we built that local political power by building a local movement of community activists and by running candidates for local office without any corporate money. Now, I was the first elected uh, city council member without any corporate money, but I was not by far the last. Um, We have now, as of November 2016, five corporate free council members out of seven sitting in the city council. So that's that's a super majority. That's a a major political shift. We changed the composition. And and I want to say, One more thing about the RPA. Um, I mean, the RPA is a a theme that I I talk about constantly because it's so important. The whole idea of a progressive alliance is so important. But we came together regardless and irrespective of, of, um, of party allegiance, of party affiliation. So some were green, some were, I mean, I was a green at the time, now I'm an independent, Um, but there were greens, there were independents, there were progressive Democrats, there were people with no party affiliation, and we just came together on our progressive values to change things. So we did, we changed things. Over the course of a little over a decade, we changed the whole composition of the council to a super majority. Five RPA members out of seven, no Chevron candidates sitting on the city council anymore. So, <laughs> so we, we were able to accomplish this in spite of Chevron spending millions to try and defeat us. And in 2014 alone, Chevron spent three and a half million dollars to try and defeat us. And all the progressives won and all the Chevron candidates lost. So we proved it can happen. It, You know, we had built up a movement and done the one-on-one with the community, educated, built consciousness, built um, a a complete understanding that corporations do not belong in our politics, in our democracy, in our democratic process. So things have changed in a political way, but the, the political change isn't why we did what we did. Yes, it is the means to get there, but the purpose of changing the political composition of the council was to change the quality of life for the people of Richmond. So we were able over the years to make some amazing changes. We we raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour. We passed uh, the first new rent control law in California in 30 years. And we reduced crime dramatically, a 75% reduction in homicides. We did this We did this with community-involved policing and by giving people opportunities, uh, addressing the root causes of crime, something novel, you know, instead of expecting the the police or thinking the police were going to solve this problem, and, you know, that's not what we wanted. So so other things we did is we got Chevron, we limited their pollution, and we got them to pay more in taxes, over $100 million in additional city taxes from Chevron. So this is, this is what you can do when you have a progressive alliance and corporate free elected officials in office, really pressuring um, the other elected officials on the council to do the right thing. We accomplished a lot. And now, of course, with the supermajority, um, things can go even faster. You know, you don't have to fight quite as hard. You still have to get the community involved because that's what democracy is all about. Um, 
So those were, you know, some of the things that Richmond accomplished. Let me just share a few more because I hate to present it all like beating back Chevron. That's very important. But we also raised up the good things. For example, we were, were part of a community choice energy program. Um, and through this program, our residents and businesses get cleaner, greener, and less expensive sources of electricity. So that's a big thing. So while we have this big polluter in our city, we also have wonderful renewable energy uh, programs in place. We also were number one in the Bay Area for solar installed per capita, we have a green job training program, many, many wonderful things. We um, supported our sanctuary status. Um, we made sure that our, uh, we did decriminalize homelessness. We uh, supported our public schools and so, so many other things. Now, it's because of this unique experience in Richmond of what we accomplished together um, that my campaign for lieutenant governor has two missions, two wings, if you will, to this campaign. The first wing, and the, it's, this is really important, is to encourage other cities and communities to build progressive alliances like Richmond did. And I know San Francisco has recently uh, gotten a progressive alliance going and I applaud that. Yeah. Um, it's really exciting, that's what we need. And, and I've been encouraging that up and down the state and over the last year, 10 new progressive alliances have emerged from San Diego all the way up the North Coast. So they're learning from, you know, they're taking from the RPA model um, a lot of the things that we did and learning some things and putting some things together on their own. They're autonomous progressive alliances, of course, but we're so glad that there's been an example with the Richmond story of, of how successes can truly, truly happen. So, um, that's, that's one wing of the campaign, encouraging these progressive alliances. The other wing of the campaign, of course, is to get elected to the lieutenant governor's seat. Because when elected, I'll keep this organizing going, this encouragement of development from the local level, this local political power building. I'll keep encouraging that and be a part of networking all the progressive alliances together. Because when we network together, we will have the pressure to put on the legislature, the state legislature, to get our statewide, our urgent statewide issues implemented. So with the power of a network of progressive alliances and other progressive groups, we can get approved <coughs> Medicare for all, single payer Medicare for all. We can <laughs> we we can get free public college. Um, we can get um, all the kind of uh, implementation that these policies need. For example, the funding implementation needs, for example, Prop 13 reform. If we reform, <laughs> if we reform Prop 13 by closing the corporate loophole, keeping it for homeowners, what we will get is $11 billion in additional state revenue. That will improve so much quality of life. We could put it into our schools. We could put it into free college, uh, single payer, whatever the needs are. Again, it will be a brainstorming um, issue for how we spend these this money and how we um, what what uh, are the most urgent needs in our state. But we, that's only one source of revenue. We also need a progressive millionaires tax that'll bring in more billions a year. We also need to bring about uh, an oil severance tax. Now, you know, we're the only oil, major oil producing state in the nation that doesn't have a tax on oil extraction. Now, we don't want any further extraction, but as long as it's being extracted and we should make the tax so high, so high that it discourages them from further extraction. <laughs> But while they're, while they're extra, and each year, let's make it go higher so we really make sure we get off of oil as soon as possible. But while we're still extracting, while the oil companies are still doing this, Californians should get that tax money and we could spend it on renewables. We could solarize the whole state, give rebates to homeowners to put solar on their rooftop. So there's so much we can do with, um, with more tax money. And there's other ideas floating out there. And I want to brainstorm 
with, you know, with the community, with experts within the community and how we can raise further revenue. Another issue I'm standing for is the statewide public bank. Yeah. This, yeah. this is important because, you know, when you deal with the private banks, what you end up doing is, is, you know, putting money in the bankers' pockets because they charge interest, et cetera. When cities float bonds, you know, you have to pay the bonds back with high interest. Well, with a public bank, it's the purpose is for the public good. And we could do so much with it. We could, you know, prioritize affordable housing. We can put into place uh, infrastructure projects. We could um, give small business loans, uh, low interest small business loans. We could give seed money to worker owned co-ops so many wonderful things but we have to put that in place i know there's different municipalities considering it we could have municipal banks and a statewide bank that's also already recently proposed by one of our supervisors wonderful and, and john i remember john john did was very much in favor of that yes so um other things that you know we have we really have to think about the environment and ban fracking uh, we need to make sure that we stop refinery pollution um, we can do all this when we think big and when we make it clear that our needs and our are the planet's needs are not some high in the sky thing but they're really important things and we the people with vision and values um, are going to organize and stand together to make them happen so um so a public bank so all the the revenue generation these you know taxing the upper echelon of society is important to make this all come true now this that's what my campaign is all about now one thing that um that i'm i'm going to try and wrap up here and want to hear some of your questions um one thing that is very important in my campaign is to get support from people. Obviously, I take no corporate money, um, so I want support, endorsements, donate if you can. Um, but I want to share with you that I have a very um, major donor recently. I was endorsed by Bernie Sanders, our revolution organization. So, so I got the endorsement of the Bernie Sanders National Our Revolution organization, along with just countless dozens, I think it's 35 right now, local California are revolution chapters. Plus I have DSA chapters endorsing me. Plus I have socialist alternative. I have green party chapters endorsing me. Many, many progressive groups, the movement for a people's party. We have to build the peace and freedom party, of course. Um, the first time the peace and freedom party uh, endorsed someone, a statewide candidate outside of their party. I'm running as an independent, a no party preference candidate, like I said. So I'm proud to be be really trying to build a big progressive tent, you know, like we did in Richmond, we, we put party affiliation aside. That's what I want to see happen in California. And that means, you know, working with all the progressive groups to build this big tent um, and, and, you know, encourage the, the big tent of progressive alliances in each city and community. Um, it can happen, it is happening, and it'll make the world of difference when we come together and show our, our political muscle, if you will, our independent political muscle, um, you know, ready to fight for what we believe in. Because when you fight, you win. When we fight, we win. <laughs> so, so I wanna end with uh, just saying, uh, that we need people to volunteer. We have text, uh, texting and phone banking sessions or uh, parties that we're organizing and we're asking people to host a, a texting and phone banking party. You'll be trained in it all. And there's a, um, a sign-in sheet that you know, before you leave, maybe you could check that whether you could host one of these parties or participate in one. Uh, very important. And like I said, donating, you could go to my website, galeforcalifornia.org. G-A-Y-L-E-F-O-R, California.org. You know, click on the volunteer button or the donate button. It would be very, very much appreciated. So we are in dark times, right? However, remember, it's always coldest and darkest right before the dawn. And the dawn is really coming closer and closer. The more we unite and collaborate, it's just around the corner. So thank you all for your attention. <laughs>